Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today as we dive deep into one of the most time-critical emergencies in cardiology, acute myocardial infarction. By the end of our session, you'll not only understand the pathophysiology and risk factors, but you'll also feel confident in executing each diagnostic and therapeutic step seamlessly. Let's begin by picturing our patient, a 58-year-old smoker with crushing chest pressure, radiating to the jaw and left arm, breaking out in a cold sweat, gasping for air. In that moment, what is happening inside the heart? Acute MI is simply that, irreversible myocardial necrosis from sudden coronary occlusion. If you see ST elevation on the ECG, you're looking at a STEMI. If the ECG is less dramatic, but troponin is through the roof, think nystemi. Both demand your fastest action. Before we rush ahead, ask yourself, which patients are most at risk? Age, check. Smoking, check. Hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and family history, check, check, and check. Every one of these factors chips away at coronary resilience, priming the heart for infarction. Now, diagnosis. Step one is immediate assessment. Within 10 minutes of the patient's arrival, grab your 12-lead ECG. Hunt for ST elevations of at least one millimeter in two contiguous leads or a new left bundle branch block. There's your STEMI. If you see ST depressions or T-wave shifts, stay alert for nestemi or unstable angina. While that ECG is printing, send labs for troponin, our gold standard biomarker. In STEMI, you don't need to wait on troponin. The ECG drives reperfusion. But in NSTEMI, a positive troponin without ST elevation seals the diagnosis. Don't forget a basic metabolic panel, CBC, and a chest X-ray to rule out mimics like aortic dissection or pneumothorax. Step three, clinical signs. Monitor vital signs closely. Hypotension, cool, clammy skin, distended neck veins. These red flags whisper of cardiogenic shock or right ventricular infarction. Listen with your stethoscope. An S4 gallop or a new hollow systolic murmur could herald papillary muscle rupture or a septal defect. Moving to step four, risk stratification is crucial for NSTEMI and unstable angina. Calculate a TIME or GRACE score to decide who needs the cath lab in the next 24 to 48 hours. And while you're at the bedside, don't hesitate to grab a quick echo. Wall motion abnormalities confirm your suspicion and might even catch early mechanical complications. Think VSD or severe mitral regurgitation. With diagnosis locked in, let's treat. Remember Mona, chewable aspirin, 162 to 325 milligrams immediately. This simple pill reduces mortality. Give oxygen if the saturation dips below 90%. Offer sublingual nitroglycerin, 0.4 milligrams for chest pain, provided blood pressure allows, and use morphine IV judiciously for pain that won't budge. For STEMI patients, it's time to mobilize the cath lab. Our goal is door to balloon under 90 minutes. Every minute saved is heart muscle saved. Before the balloon inflates, load aspirin alongside a P2Y12 inhibitor. Ticagrelor 180 mg is a strong choice and start IV heparin. If PCI can't happen within 90 minutes, fibrinolysis with TPA within 30 minutes is your backup. In STEMI, an unstable angina follow a slightly different rhythm. Initiate dual antiplatelet therapy, aspirin plus clopidogrel or ticagrelor, and heparin anticoagulation. High-risk patients, we're aiming for PCI in the next 24 to 48 hours. Low risk, monitor closely on telemetry and manage medically.
Adjunctive medications are just as vital. Within the first 24 hours, start a beta blocker, metoprolol, 25 mg orally or 5 mg IV if the patient is hypertensive, to slow the heart and decrease oxygen demand. Kickstart a high-intensity statin like atorvastatin 80 mg to stabilize plaque. If this is an anterior MI or there's evidence of heart failure, add an ACE inhibitor once the patient is hemodynamically stable. Throughout, be vigilant for arrhythmias. Ventricular fibrillation is the most common cause of early death, so have your defibrillator ready. Monitoring never stops. In the CCU or telemetry unit, you'll watch for VF bradyarrhythmias, especially in inferior MIs and signs of acute heart failure. Special situations call for special measures. Cardiogenic shock may need an intra-aortic balloon pump or inotropic support. Right ventricular infarction demands fluids to boost preload and absolute avoidance of nitrates. Finally, disposition and secondary prevention. All MI patients belong in the hospital. Post-PCI or fibrinolysis, STEMI cases go to the coronary care unit, and STEMI slash UA patients to telemetry or CCU for close observation. Before discharge, every patient must leave on aspirin, a P2-12 inhibitor for 12 months, a beta blocker, an ACE inhibitor, and a statin. Don't just hand out prescriptions. Counsel on smoking cessation, diabetes control, and lipid management. Schedule cardiology follow-up and refer to cardiac rehabilitation. This holistic approach is what transforms survival into long-term health. So, as you walk back to your wards today, remember, rapid recognition, structured diagnosis, timely reperfusion, meticulous monitoring, and robust secondary prevention. That is how we turn the tide against the silent killer that is acute myocardial infarction. Thank you, and I'd love to hear your questions.